Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyce, and we are Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for the end-of-life care and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about dying to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live at the end of our lives and to communicate about the kind of care we want, don't want for ourselves. We believe that the place to transform this is not in the intensive care unit, but together we can explore the various paths to life's ending. Together we can make these difficult conversations easier. Together we can make sure our own wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed and respected. So if you're ready, join us. Over the last six months, we have invited members of various religions and traditions to talk with us about the end-of-life culture. So, much of what we think and do comes from our family narrative, our story, our history. So much is lost when we do not pass on our family story, especially today when everyone has smartphones and people talk in 140 characters. Today's guest is my friend, who has given so much of the history of the Hawaiian nation. He is an author, attorney, lecturer, a radio and TV host. My guest, Poka Lice. Aloha, Poka. Aloha, Marcia. I'm kind of uh, smirking because uh, end of life discussion and uh, uh, my forte really being of uh, no, no future worries. planning and planning for the Hawaiian nation. Yes. Can you draw me the connection between yes. the two? Please. There's a direct connection. Okay. Because as we said, so much of what people do at the end of life mm -hmm. depends on their narrative, their stories, their family stories. Mm -hmm. But we lose that. We lose so much of the stories, the past and whatnot. So, and again, as people talk in 140 characters, mm. they miss. Mm. What we invited you to do is to talk about the past. We're going to talk about mm. yesterday, mm -hmm. July 4, mm -hmm. and the reenactment of the July 4, 1894, because those are the parts of the history that most of this generation doesn't know. And every yeah. time that, that we look at these reenactments, we learn, we become, then the history becomes part of the narrative. It becomes part of the way we live and the stories we pass on to our families or don't pass on, as the case may be. Okay. So, uh, so that's the connection. Thank you for that, that connection. That's the and connection. And I would have to perhaps challenge or break out of the paradigm of end of life, whether or not there is a separation between past, present, and future, as if life and death is really a reality or it's something that we impose upon uh, evidence that we see, a guy walking one day and the next day is in a, in a grave, that kind of, uh, whether or not it really is, quote, end of life. Dealing the same way as we would with the idea of history being something of the past, as we said yesterday, as we talked about the 4th of July, the past has so much impact, influence, direction for us today and into our future that it should not be left in the past, but we need to grab hold of history, grab hold of the past, insult it, comment on it, praise it, take possession of it, and don't leave it there so that the continuum of time is something that is continuous rather than chopped up between these, uh, what do you call it, road signs that we say life here, death here, birth here, death there. So I, I'm saying that the paradigm itself may not be appropriate or true for all people. Well, that is why we have asked mm -hmm. people from all kind of cultures and traditions to talk about exactly that, how they deal with this. But where, where, I'm, where I wanted you to do is because we, yesterday was all about bringing the past into today, learning stories that we don't have. Mm -hmm. Um, which impacts 
today. And again, most people don't know. Yeah, day but, before yesterday, if it's not on a smartphone, they don't know it. So uh, we wanted to talk about what happened. Mm. Let's re re-examine yesterday, which was the reenactment of the 4th of July, 1894. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. people have a place. We had, I got an interesting text from someone who said, we had to have her husband because his grandfather was the Hawaiian who was made to take the flag down. And we got all kinds of little, little pieces of history that we didn't know because people were, were pulling up this history, this, these pieces, these stories, the narratives of their family. And that is where we're going. What yeah. I want people to look at, those little things that they may think are not important, but they contribute to where they are in life. There's a concept of a Hawaiian style of building stone walls. And you use a large faces of the rock to face outside so that it shows to the public some major aspects of the stone wall. But you also need the small stones to give support to the larger stones. I think as we look at Hawaii's history, one, we look at the major story and the conclusions that can be drawn from the major story to such a point where even the United States Congress, the President of the United States in two instances, in Cleveland and Clinton, they have confessed to the illegalities of the U.S. agents and the occurrences in Hawaii. The details are to some extent important, but not to lose sight of the major story. And so whenever you deal with Hawaii, Hawaiian history, you have to understand the larger story and then the interesting details of whose grandfather brought down the flag, what happened to the pieces of the flag that was cut up, all those kinds of stuff are interesting detail, but it's a matter of just understanding the grand story. So what we tried to do yesterday was to recite the grand story, especially when in a society here in Hawaii, where as a result of the theft, as a result of the overthrow, as a result of the taking of Hawaiian independence, we are now caught in an era in which the vast majority of the people, the vast majority of those in control of media, the vast majority of those in control of economics in Hawaii, of education in Hawaii, are all persuaded into the belief that we are legitimately today part of the United States so that people celebrate the American independence but totally ignoring the fact that while you're celebrating American independence on that same day in 1894, the Hawaiian independence was stolen. Sometimes we look at the term independence and we don't fully appreciate. We talk about it in terms of the 4th of July and firing rockets and all of those things from the American side. But what really is this idea of independence other than some uh, hazy principle? Independence is the fruition of the exercise of self-determination. Self-determination is so important. This is what the American colonies had fought for, to be independent, to determine for themselves. This is what the Hawaiians had established through the exercise of self-determination. Uh, if we look at it from a national position, people think we're talking merely about politics. But let's take for a moment to move it down to the individual. When you take away someone's self-determination, when you take away someone's independence, what have you stolen from that person? You, you have enslaved that person. They went through wars, they went through a long period of history. When you enslave a whole nation, you take away their right to control the transmigration into this territory, you take away the right to have them run their lands as they should. What results do you have? You have the situation that we have today. You have homelessness, you have 
uh, unlimited infiltration of foreigners coming into Hawaii. You have our failure to control our relationship with foreign governments, and you cede that to another country. So all of these changes that is, is bypassing us because we don't control anymore that kind of ability to tell that story of what happened in Hawaii. We think everything is grand. Let's go down and march through the streets of Honolulu or the streets of Kailua and pretend or just forget for a moment and just enjoy the fact that we are in the United States an independent nation, all the while possessing a foreign country's nation and trying to forget those issues. That's why history is so important. So tell us now, recreate for us what happened yesterday on the steps of the Iolani Palace. Okay, what we did was retell the story of what had happened back in 1894. If we go back just a year before that, 1893, the American troops landed in Hawaii, a hundred and what was that, 186, I forget the number, uh, landed in Hawaii and through force of arm, essentially forced Queen Liliuokalani to surrender. To surrender not to the American government, but to uh, 18 people who declared themselves now the provisional government of Hawaii. Merely by declaration, they say, oh, we hereby declare that we are the provisional government of Hawaii. Yeah. Mr. Henry, was it Henry Cooper that Henry tacked Cooper, the, the, who the read, provision on the, back, on the door or whatever? Well, yeah. he read the document, read the document. In, in back of the Ali Olani oh, Hale. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in making that declaration, the American troops then walked across the street to give recognition and protection of these 18 members and said, we recognize these, this group as the official government of Hawaii. All previous to that, Lilio Kalani, who was the head of the, uh, uh, the Hawaiian monarchy, had been recognized officially, not only within the United States, but throughout the world as the representative of this independent nation. So it was a coup d'etat, an attempt to change the rulership of Hawaii to one that would be favorable to giving Hawaii to the United States. What happened was that as soon as that event occurred, Lilio Kalani said, okay, I will, I will yield my authority, not to the provisional government, but to the United States, who through force of arms have, have forced me to do so and have threatened to take the lives of myself and our, our uh, members of our nation. Only for so long as president, the President of the United States is able to do an investigation and restore the life back to the Hawaiian people. So it wasn't a, a permanent session. It wasn't a giving up of her, her chair or her seat as queen. What the, uh, the provisional government did immediately was to send a treaty of annexation to the United States, and within less than a month, they had the treaty submitted into the Senate, signed by the President of the United States. Now, oh boy, we have to take a break. Okay. And when we come back, let's move up to... The 4th of July and why July. Was, what, yes. what took place okay. there. Okay, great. Thank okay. you. Right. We'll be right back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Olelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search diveheart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Living in this crazy world so caught up in the confusion Nothing is making sense For me and you Maybe we can find a way There's got to be solution How to make a brighter day And we're back with my guest, Poka Lainui. Aloha. Aloha, Poka. Poka has, Poka has been on the forefront of the sovereignty movement for as long as I can remember. I met you in, in 1987, 
when we were fighting chemical weapons to mm -hmm. Johnson Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that's a long time, and I've watched you <laughs> with the sovereignty movement grow. So now let's go back to okay. tomorrow. I, I, think I meant we, to yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we left a story where uh, the Treaty of Annexation was sent to the Senate of the United States. At that time, President of the United States was Harrison. Uh -huh. And at that time, they would inaugurate new presidents, not in January, but in March. Right. So in March, Cleveland comes into office. Cleveland sees the treaty. He also receives an emissary from England, and that is uh, Princess Kailani. And they appeal to him, you cannot accept the treaty until you at least do an investigation in Honolulu. So he sends his minister, Blunt, to Hawaii to investigate, and he receives a report. When he receives a report, he says, I cannot allow the treaty to go through the United States Senate because of the discovery that I have found in the Blunt report. And then he contains in his speech in his joint houses, uh, to the joint houses of Congress, he says, by, uh, essentially through an aggressive act by the United States, we have attempted to change the leadership in Hawaii so that it will be more favorable to accepting or to ceding Hawaii to the United States. He says, I will not fall for that. And this government who claims to be the government of Hawaii, this provisional government, provisional meaning temporary, doesn't even have a constitution. Its whole legitimacy is in question. So he says, as long as I'm president, no, I'm not going to submit the treaty back into the Senate. Mm -hmm. So what happens back at the ranch here in Hawaii? They say, well, if Cleveland is not going to accept us because we don't have a constitution, let's change our clothing. Let's get a constitution, call ourselves by another name. So Sanford Dole, who heads this provisional government, says, we shall have 37 delegates in a constitutional convention. 19 of whom shall be appointed by me, that is, myself and my 18 cabinet members, and the balance of the people, which, by the way, is a minority, the other 18 will be elected by the Hawaiian people. But to leave nothing to chance, he also says that before anyone can run in that election or even vote in that election, they have to swear their allegiance to the provisional government and disavow any loyalty to Queen Liliuokalani. So it's a setup. Mm -hmm. Of course. The, they hold a constitutional convention and they adopt a document. They call it the Constitution, submitted by Sanford Dole and Lauren Thurston. Now, so that on the 3rd of July, it comes we, out of we, the we convention. We have to tell everybody that Thurston is really the power broker here. Uh, Thurston was a, a planner in 10 years prior to that, in 1882. He goes to the United States. He sets and he, up an office in D.C. And yeah. he asks, mm -hmm. if we should be able to take over this government and that, or this office and that office, will you be willing to accept a session of Hawaii to the United States? And the president at that time doesn't give him a direct answer, but say that you would probably find a very favorable administration at that time. So yes, Thurston, Thurston was, was very much yeah. part of it. So, move. so if we come back to now the 4th of July, the next day, mm -hmm. Sanford Doe walks, uh, descends to the middle steps of Iolani Palace as we had uh, yesterday, and he merely declares that good government requires that essentially white people take over because the brownies don't understand how to run good government. Yeah, he says the Anglo-Saxons and those of Teutonic descent, yes. which means uh, Europe. And one day, other even, people may even, be able yeah. to... He even said, well, I guess we could use the, the Portuguese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what he does is he merely declares this constitution as the new constitution for new government being the Republic of Hawaii. In making that declaration, the Constitution says that all of the lands and all of the waters of the government of Hawaii are automatically lands and waters of our government. All of the people, all of the citizens of the Hawaiian nation are automatically declared to be citizens of our government. And Sanford Dole is to remain as president until 1900. Without any votes taken, merely by declaration, we have a constitution, a new government formed. And mm -hmm. so the rest of the story is that they wait until Cleveland gets out of office, a new president comes in, and that is McKinley, and McKinley then submits a treaty back into the Senate. Although it wasn't approved in the, in the Senate, 
And that is when they adopted the joint resolution of Congress. Mm -hmm. So that is how the process of ceding Hawaii, all of the lands, all of the waters, and what we don't talk about enough is the human beings that should be considered ceded human beings because we never voted for it. Well, let's go back to the last couple of minutes here. Let's go back to the reenactment. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned when they, they step up to the podium and they swear in Dole. When they, they say, you are now president at their constitutional convention, they say, you're it. We decided on having a name and we think that the name Republic of Hawaii is more respectable, has more mm -hmm. substance. Then you also, when, according to every, these, one of the things that we have here in the book and with the Queen's book, the Queen's story, we actually have dialogue because the provisional government, in their infinite wisdom, I don't know why, but they did. They left all of their documents, all of their letters, everything intact, so we can use their dialogue. We, we, we know this is the, mm -hmm. the skullduggery that they did. Who, who did what? Who wrote to whom? Uh, but you mentioned cutting the flag. And it says that Thurston steps from behind Dole after he's sworn in. Mm -hmm. takes the Hawaiian flag down and then begins to, to cut it into two by three strips to give to their ancestors as souvenirs for their ancestors. It, it, it just blows, it, it's more than, than, than ordinary people can handle. Take down the flag, okay, so you took the flag down. But cutting it into two by three strips to give away. It's it just as souvenirs. It, you know, it can seem uh, outrageous, but as I said before, let's not use the pebbles to substitute for the major story. There are a lot of details in our history of Hawaii. And so we need to separate the, what is insignificant, not insignificant, what is smaller in terms of importance than the largest story of the theft in which the United States of America participated, okay. first by landing the American troops, going through and allowing changing of clothing between one, one group of people from the Missionary Party to the Committee for Public Safety, to the Provisional Government, and now to the Republic of Hawaii, and then submitted Hawaii, and now we become a territory of the United States, and then a state of the United States. That chain of events, you cannot lose sight of it. Although the minutia of history is interesting, but don't lose a major story, because then we, we get caught up in other things other than the major story. Oh. Uh, for those of you that did not, we have a count of 487 people that showed up at mm -hmm. the palace mm -hmm. for the reenactment. Mm -hmm. And there are clips on YouTube about the reenactment. Uh, tons of pictures. Everybody took pictures and posted it on Facebook. So <laughs> go look, go, go be a part of history and really take it in, understand, feel it. Uh, again, read it. It's written lots of places. You've written about it. The the book, where it is we got the book, has word for word of their conversations and their letters. The Queen's story documents everything that went on for all of those years, from the bayonet con uh, constitution, the whole, all of it, step by step. So I'm asking you, the audience. To, to do that, to, to be a part of that history, read it, enjoy it, know it. And this is the thing that you pass on, because we are talking you know, about having conversations, and other than the 140 mm -hmm. word thing. So we need to ask you, the audience, to do this. Ask Polka if he will come back and well, talk some more. Before we close, let me say, 
that let's not leave history in the past and it's just an interesting conversation. Think about, look at what is happening into the future, the movement towards the United Nations, discussions towards independence, and the continuity of life in Hawaii. And I think that is where the importance of what happened yesterday uh, rests on. Well, thank you again. It's been a pleasure, as always, to have to visit with you and come back and visit again. Okay. Thank you for inviting me. Aloha. Aloha.